And a very good evening. Sky News can reveal that a top British diplomat was the man at the centre of a secret government file about his unnatural sexual behaviour. Sir Peter Heyman, who died in 1992, was the subject of the paperwork prepared for the attention of Margaret Thatcher when she was Prime Minister, which focuses on allegations of him as a child abuser. Tom Parmenter has tonight's exclusive report. After being held for 35 years by officials at the heart of Westminster, the Cabinet Office has finally released Thatcher's secret file. It names Sir Peter Heyman, a top British diplomat and someone who once worked for MI6. We're looking at Prime 19, but if we do an advanced search... It was university lecturer Chris Murphy who stumbled across the file and alerted Sky News. It has now been released to the National Archives. Its full title, revealed for the first time, is Prem 19588 Security. Sir Peter Heyman, allegations against former public official of unnatural sexual proclivities, security aspects. It was prepared for the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and the existence of the document that has the potential to throw new light on the current child abuse inquiries meant it was raised in the Commons. The revelations by Sky News yesterday about the document were significant and illuminating. And there's a clear public interest in knowing whether a former Prime Minister received a briefing on sexual crimes committed by a senior intelligence officer or officers. Within a week, it's been opened up to public scrutiny. This document's being made public uh, not because of the government's inquiry into child sex abuse, but it's being made public despite the government's inquiry into child sex abuse. We've had to rely on a, a, an academic from Salford University to discover this file, and, 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 and we've had to rely on backbench MPs uh, to press government to make it public. Sir Peter Heyman was a career diplomat who even worked as the High Commissioner to Canada. He worked also for the British Intelligence Service MI6. He died in 1992. He did face allegations before he died. In 1981, the Maverick MP Geoffrey Dickens accused him in the House of Commons of being a child abuser. But as far as we know, Sir Peter Heyman was only ever charged with one offence, an act of gross indecency in a public toilet. Heyman also had links to the controversial paedophile information exchange. It shouldn't be a surprise that powerful people were aware of his activities. But it's unlikely that he acted alone. Children were abused and possibly even killed in the Westminster of the 1980s. Unravelling it all is a slow process, and the Heyman file is just one part of it. Tom's here with me now, and Tom, you've been going through all the detail of this file, some quite complex material in there. Yeah, it's an insight into the workings of the British government at the time, what they knew about Sir Peter Heyman, how they were trying to control that information, and what implications that information about his unnatural sexual behaviour, as it's described, might have for foreign security services who may, of course, want to get leverage on a British diplomat. So lots going on within this. It's quite striking how anyone who might have been a victim of all this isn't really mentioned at all. It's about the workings of government. What was the message? What was the line they were sticking to? If we look at one particular point from a briefing document, which is in uh, one of the lines here, you can see secret at the top there. Third one, line to take, there has been no cover-up. That was the priority. That was what the British that establishment were doing. That's the top lines, doing. we say. Well, yeah, that was what they wanted to get across. There has been no cover-up. And, of course, that raises many, many more questions as to about whether or not there was a cover-up. Who else may have been involved with Sir Peter Heyman in this unnatural behaviour? Was he acting alone? It seems very unlikely that he was. But, of course, understanding all this now, really holding to account the politicians of today for what the politicians of the past have done, of course, is a difficult process, but one that David Cameron has promised to undertake. Indeed, and it, as you say, this raises many more questions than it answers for the moment, though, Tom. Thank you. As to that point, what the security services knew about that. But uh, what I think is interesting most of all about this file is the pressure the government is under the minute it, it, just the title of a file is discovered that it has to be made public, and that has happened quite quickly. And as you say, this was deeply unpleasant stuff, but it was some time ago. Why the interest in his past? Well, really, since the Savile affair, there have been uh, increasing allegations and concerns that there were 
prominent paedophiles in the 1970s and 80s. There is a police investigation going on, uh, which we on the BBC revealed was looking at potential uh, child manslaughter, child killings or murders. That continues. There is a public inquiry that is in a mess at the moment, but the government will announce probably next week how that is going to continue. So all this is going on, and I think there is great pressure for the government not to be accused of a cover-up. If there are files like this in the uh, dusty archives, say, of the Cabinet Office where this one was, there's pressure to get them out as quickly as possible. Tom Simon speaking to me a little earlier.